bank accounts, credit cards, etc., etc. There is a modeling which is working at the backdrop. So we are looking at uh, a modeling through all directions. If if you are using a bank account, there there are softwares which have been prepared based on the models. So that works out what you're looking at the front end and so on and so forth. When I look at one asset class, the modeling is simple. For example, I'm looking at a particular factory or a manufacturing house. But when I combine the various asset classes, it becomes a company. So a model can be formed for a company. I increase the parameters further. I look at the state governments. So a model can be formed of state finances as well. We go a step further. I look at the finances of the country. A model can be formed for central banks, for the state finances, and so on and so forth. In fact, a modeling can be done of a region as well. For example, North America, and so on and so forth. But when we strictly talk in terms of where it is getting used, it's getting used in pitch books, when I'm talking about investment banking arena, it's getting used in research of equities, these structured products like mezzanine debt, and so on and so forth. Now, every company likes to grow organically or inorganically. They like to add value for their stakeholders. So they look for greenfield projects or brownfield. They look for existing internal growth by investing into their current capacities, or they look for investing into new companies in form of mergers and acquisitions. All these parameters are covered inside a model for a particular company. So we do a modeling for mergers and acquisitions, we do it for a project financing. We do it for all the capex that are expected to happen over a period of time. All the parameters are captured in a particular given financial model for a company. Now, it's in our nature that they venture into profitable projects. Uh, they generate the cash flows and so on and so forth. So it's basically a mathematical representation of a complete business model. Now, what are the purposes of a financial model? Where shall I deploy it? As I said in the beginning, it's an input as well as an output. Now, it's an input for end products like if you are negotiating on a particular transaction, be it on IPO side, FPO side, merger, acquisition, raising of funds through private equity, venture, or you're discussing on the security side. That is, you are into working into a brokerage house and you are negotiating with the clients whether you should buy a particular script or not. So that's an output. That's where the model is getting utilized or used. When we are looking from the input side, I cannot simply form a model based on whatever is given. For example, in US and UK, we file uh, in U US, we file 10 Qs and 10 Ks. So that gives a picture of historicals for any particular company. But if I have to project what they are going to do in the future, we'll have to look into what kind of revenues they are looking for, whether they are coming up with new ventures or they are expanding internally, or they're looking for a few mergers in future, and so on and so forth. So that understanding, along with the historicals given of the existing business model of the company, forms as an input. So that's an input which translates into a financial model, which further translates into pitch books or pitches which are done to various clients. And of course, at the end of the day, any model would give you one thing which everybody is fighting in for, that is the pricing. So we'll use various methods like of valuation like DCF, comparables, precedent analysis, options valuations, real options, 
and so on and so forth. So all these various methods are there to come at one number, that is the pricing. Warren Buffet uses a different technique. They use a the valuation based on investing, but when you value investing, but when you look at George Soros, he's altogether a different ball game. His theory is different. It's based on that the pricing regulates or impact the fundamentals, whereas Mr. Buffer says that the fundamentals affects the pricing. So everything hovers around the pricing. And this was about financial modeling. Now, the carriers there, uh, where all you would see uh, the people having this kind of knowledge getting higher. Now let me tell you, be it from entry level analyst to the, to the extent of the MD inside any bulge bracket investment bank or a big bank like JP Morgan, HSBC, uh, UBS, Kurtzers, Jefferies, and so on and so forth. If you are not well versed with the financial modeling, or if you cannot understand the valuation models, you don't have a place inside that particular bank. It's not possible to survive. Because that's what is the basic bread and butter for every day's work in and work out. So you'll see uh, financial modeling getting used in acquisitions. Uh, it's getting used in project financing and equity research, uh, in uh, financial planning for your investments. That is, it's getting used at manager level, at MD's level, at director's level as well. At the beginning level, it is inevitable. And then you just have to understand those models which have been prepared by your team and so on and so forth. So we are looking the use of financial modeling at not just the front-end finance, that is the investment banking, private equity firms, risk securities houses, but the back-end like regulatory finance as well, that is in taxation, be it direct and indirect, and models are getting deployed, and so on and so forth. So you're looking at risk management. Uh, we're looking at uh, the front-end finance, that is IV, uh, securities, etc., and we're looking at regulatory. So all three divisions or all three wings of finance use financial modeling to the core. Now, this is the average salary of any financial modeler. Of course, when we are saying a financial modeler, it's not just restricted to that. You're expected to have the fundamental knowledge of all the, all the sectors you're working in and to combine it with your financial modeling skills. So you're looking at somewhere around 80 to 80,000 to 100,000 US dollars. In some of the IBs, you'll get bonuses up to 50 to 90 percent. And uh, on an average, when you compare it, the pays in financial modeling or in uh, the fields which are using financial modeling, it's 30 to 40 percent higher than the person who is working at the similar level. For example, you're working as a finance manager, and for example, there's a manager in operations would be drawing on an average 30 percent higher than that person that is working in operations. So we're looking at 80,000 to 100,000 US uh, plus bonuses, and uh, usually we have seen that that the trends of uh, the downfall in the pays, etc., is slightly lower in uh, in these fields, and so on and so forth. Now, what's the outlook that we are looking at? Of course, uh, one of the rating agencies, uh, Moody's, uh, said that we are looking at a sustained GDP growth rate, what we have in what we have witnessed in past one or two years. The jobs are more than what they were in 2008 and 2009. And as a result, there would be a good bargaining power available to the employees. If I have to forward my, myself into BFSI sector, it becomes inevitable for us to understand how to model any given company or asset class. So unless we do that, it's very difficult for us to survive there. 
So we are having, uh, we're looking at a positive hiring activity uh, since the last 12 months, and that's expected to be there for at least another one, two years. There's a demand overall in the BFSIS sector. The overall transactions which happened in last year, that is 2012, I'm talking about the investment banking department transactions, were 10 to 12 percent higher as compared to the past previous years, that is 9 and 11, especially from the North American division. So still date, North America, that's a Wall Street, occupies more than 30 percent, that is 30 to 33 percent of the overall transactions that are happening across the globe. So U Europe, Asia, and Africa takes up like 60 to 65 percent of the pie, and rest has been taken up by North America. So we're we are looking at around average pay of 90,000 if you are from a non-Ivy League MBA graduate, but if you gain the knowledge of financial modeling and uh, expected bonuses of 10 to 30 percent and why 10 to 30 percent because securities houses etc pay around that number on an average IVs pay around 40 50 sometimes up to 100 percent as well depending upon the scenarios so hiring is remain going to remain strong uh, and we are looking at US banks performing good in another 12 to 18 months as a result. There's a clear-cut demand for the new employees or the existing from the existing firms. What, what are skills required for this particular role? When I say this role means the role inside investment banks, the role inside mergers and acquisitions team, the role inside structured financing team and so on and so forth. So wherever you're working, example, you're working on the sales side, on the risk management, on the audit and tax side, that's regulatory. So the sales, when we are talking about, we are talking about the pitching, pitching of for the transactions, generating leads, risk management, GARP, FRM, etc., and audit and tax, that's the regulatory side. As I stated, there are three wings of any, of finance in any country, basically. So when the, these three the fundamental knowledge are combined with financial modeling. That is the understanding what you're going to get through these classes which we are going to arrange. Uh, then it becomes a lethal combination. Then you are at par with somebody who is working inside an organization say since past two years or maybe three years for that matter. Because now you have the fundamental knowledge, you understand how the transactions work, how the pitch works, how we are going to negotiate onto it, and how does it look like into an Excel sheet. So it's in combination of your understanding as well as deployment. This becomes a lethal combination. It's as good as a person who is there inside a firm for two, three years. Now, let me give you an uh, instance, basically. Uh, this is a real life scenario. One of my you know, friends said it's a two, three years back thing was getting hired in uh, top five private equity firms, one of the top five private equity firms in the world. So, of course, it was from US, but they were hiring for a London-based branch. Now, they just asked that candidate one question. That is, create an LBO model. We'll pay you $100,000 plus up to 75 to 80 percent bonuses in a year. I mean, it was in pounds as we are talking about the London-based branch. So, I convert in 200,000 US dollars. Create an LBU model. LBU model, leverage buyout. You create that in four and a half hours time and you're done, you're selected. Just on a base of one model, they were hiring the candidates. Why? It's very simple. When you're forming a model, the, the, the employer is checking every skill of yours. That is, they're checking your Excel skills, they're checking your understanding of any transaction skills, they're checking your fundamental skills, and at the end of the day, they're checking your speed as well. So if a general person or a normal person starts building up an LBO model, it would take around eight to nine hours easily. I'm talking of an 
average LBO model, not the complex and structured ones. But if you are gaining this experience of going through these classes and practicing onto your own for one or two models and so on and so forth, we are looking at a speed of four to five hours to finish such kind of model. So boom, you do that model, form that model, and you're selecting in an interview. Now this is the uh, pace which we are looking at. Of course, you have maximum when it comes to directors inside a private equity house uh, and then into IBs as well. Because as I said, North America still forms a third of the total portion of the total transactions that are happening across the globe. That's why you demand the best of the brains in investment banking and private equity. As a result, they are commanding the best pace, be it an analyst, an associate, or director. These are some of the companies that are hiring currently, Fisher Investments. Uh, some companies are headquarters in Luxembourg, but are hiring in US. JP Morgan, of course, HSBC, BlackRock, uh, City, and so on and so forth. Now, what we have for offerings when it comes to understanding of financial modeling, how you can gain this knowledge in through these classes, basically. So, we will be offering the perfect course to understand financial modeling to the core, convert this interest into basically a knowledge. So, there will be two full days classroom training by industry experts. That's a module one, and the four full days classroom training by industry experts, again, that's a module two. 20 hours of video tutorials. You can plug them, watch them any point of time. There will be sample financial models, uh, example workbooks, PDF guides, unfilled and filled Excel templates for practice, uh, and 24-7 uh, support for doubt clearing. Of course, we are approved by GAP and CF Institute for CE credit hours. So that's an added advantage. Now we look at one model to take a feel of how does uh, overall financial model would look like. This is the financial model for LinkedIn when it was about to file for an IPO. Now we did the evaluations. This has been done by our team at EduPristine. This is a complete model of uh, LinkedIn. Uh, we'll, we'll look at first what are the inputs that are going in. This is a summary, basically. Uh, as you can see, there are scroll bars there, as well as the drop downs. We'll form it in such a way that any financial model actually should look so simple. If you're looking at it for the first time, see every tab is giving you the knowledge of what it's going to show you. That is, what's the content there, and so on and so forth. Plus, when you are inside any particular tab, it should give you a clear understanding of what's the currency, etc., which years we are talking about, what's the estimated, I mean, which years are under the estimations, what are the content there, how I can change it. Suppose if I change any content, any drop down, a single drop down into this particular financial model, my whole valuation should change accordingly. That's how dynamic these have to be. It should not be like I'm plugging in some number somewhere, but my full model doesn't give me the end result. Then it's certainly not dynamic. So we have to create it in such a way that if I change one growth rate of one assumption in one year, my final value should change accordingly. And so I have, say, uh, scroll, I mean, drop downs. I can use scroll bars or I can use CAGR. And here we have scroll, options of using the scrolls, etc. So I can change the prepaid expense as a percent of revenue. So these are balance sheet assumptions. And of course, we have income tax rate there. Now, based on LinkedIn's business model, we have formulated its revenue. So number of registered users, the growth rate that we are envisaging are based on discussion with the management or using of research reports, the corporate solutions uh, that the LinkedIn, the customers which are there and onto the corporate solutions side and the growth rate there. So you have retail as well as you have corporate clients. Um, then there are three 
divisions where LinkedIn derives its values from, say hiring solutions, marketing, premium solutions, and uh, total revenue. That's how we derive at it. In a similar way, we have a costing function, that's cost of revenue, sales and marketing, product development, and so on and so forth, as well as the asset schedule. These are to be kept dynamic in such a way that if somebody is looking to invest in LinkedIn's IPO outside from US, then say for example you're negotiating uh, with an investor. If I'm an investment bank for LinkedIn and I'm negotiating for investments for, uh, for an investor from Europe, say Luxembourg or Germany, then the numbers should come up into that currency. That's how dynamic they should be and so on and so forth. So I'm looking at an equity, the all kinds of equities, structured products which are being released by LinkedIn or issued by LinkedIn, say mezzanine debt, convertible preferred stock, etc., cetera, et cetera, convertible, uh, redeemable convertible preferred stock. How do we value based on the features of those particular issued instruments? Okay. So I'll have these, I'll have the uh, description of uh, all the given instruments and value them accordingly for the future. Now this is a dew point analysis. How much my net profit margins are looking like against the sales earnings which are available to me and so on and so forth for the balance sheet side as well. So how to prepare these? We learn all this inside the classes. This is a summary of profit and loss account. See the numbers are getting derived from revenue builder. What kind of shortcuts to use? We we used to uh, uh, to come and go forth and so on and so forth. So toggling between sheets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all that would be covered up in the classes. And of course, we are looking at our summarized balance sheet for LinkedIn. Once we are done with profit and loss balance sheet and cash flows. We're looking at profitability ratios, return on investment ratios, ratios. Again, these are calculated from different sheets. So how to calculate them and so on and so forth. You see there's a conditional formatting which has been applied into these sheets. Whatever numbers have been hard punched are in different color. So you can clearly point out what is being hard punched and where. Okay, so uh, those small areas will be covered which will help you to look at uh, I mean how to arrive at if there are any mistakes in the model and so on and so forth. Finally, whenever we are doing a modeling it's to arrive at it and valuations and cash flows. Without that any model is incomplete because we are looking at the pricing of that. So this is a DCF discounted cash flows method. Uh, we have applied to LinkedIn along with uh, it's it's based on an FCFE method because it's a debt-free company. If it's a debt company, we can apply FCFE or FCFF. Uh, there are five to six ways of just calculating a terminal value. Okay, so we'll we'll cover all those four or five methods inside classes. Then finally, we have trade. Comparables method, that is a trading comparables. We are comparing the valuation of LinkedIn to the likes of Google, eBay, Amazon, Baidu, Oracle. And uh, of course, we look at any precedent analysis. So that is, if there are any f such IPOs that are coming, what are the pre IPO valuations that they have commanded. Once I've done or applied these three, four methods, we are looking at the summary of these valuations. That is, in form of a football field. Now for example in trading comparables uh, valuation based on EV by EBITDA I got the lowest of 31, highest of 66. P by E method I got 26 and 62 and P by BV method that is book value uh, we got 23 and 29. So that's what is getting represented here. So P by book value 22.8 to 28.7 and so on and so forth. This would give you an idea of what on an average valuation we should command for LinkedIn. So we are not restricting ourselves to just one method which is riskier inside Pitchworks. Once we have generated the model then we'll come to the final summaries. That is summary of valuation. 
Now this is also dynamic with check-in boxes. The moment I uncheck the cash and cash equivalents, it's gone. So if I if I just want, I mean, I'll just like to show cash and cash equivalents growth rate along with stockholders equally. So this is the chart with the labels plus the hiring solutions, premium subscriptions, profit before taxes, marketing solutions. So we can check whatever we'd like to, depending upon what I'm negotiating with. So if there's a client who's just looking for investments into LinkedIn, but it's, it, it's, it's trying to understand what, are the, what is the growth rate of hiring solutions, vis-a-vis -vis my growth rate. So I'll simply click on those and stockholders equity. So this is how it is looking like. The same way we will have a dynamic sheet for ratio analysis, we can select profitability ratios or return on investment ratios, activity ratios, liquidity and solvency, and so on and so forth. So these can be prepared from scratch. Okay. How do we imbibe or how do we take advantage of all this? It's through these classes. So you're getting full classroom day training, that's module one and two. 20 hours of video tutorials, sample financial models, example workbooks, and so on and so forth. Once we are done with the financial modeling, uh, what do we ex expect to gain from these classes? The first and the foremost thing is you will be in a position to prepare models something like what we showed you, something like LinkedIn. Okay, so that's just an example. That's from tech sector. But we are looking at mining sector, we are looking at real estate, we are looking at infra, we are looking at all possible sectors. So you can prepare a model for any company across the globe in any sector. Because we will cover tax rates, we will cover cross-border merger transactions, and so on and so forth. And those would be error-free. If there is any error, you would be in a position to spot those in no time. Okay, so we will show you those techniques of how to spot errors. because there were 11 sheets running in some hundred rows in each sheet, so it's very difficult to point out where the errors are. So there are techniques for finding out that as well. You'll understand the financial modeling, the best practices, and where can a single number change can lead to a whole change into the number. So you can slightly present them as per your requirements. So if you're on the buy side or if you're on the sell side and so on and so forth. Understanding of design principles, discover, I mean, you will be in a position to understand few more, say, less known techniques of Excel as a shortcuts, basically, as we call them. These are the details about our batch, which we are going to take, and the batch is beginning from 15th of Feb, 2014, uh, in Los Angeles and Toronto, at both the locations, on the same day. Uh, this is a this is a costing structure, 597 USD for two days exclusive master class and for four days master class 897. The contact person is Austin. This is the email address and number as well. We'll come to that. A few details for us uh, as an Jupiter's team. Uh, we are recognized by Premier Finance uh, say training institutions like CFA, FRM. We have international certifications for teaching CFA, FRM, PRM. We are taking finance courses like financial modeling, business analytics. There's a list of 25 plus courses. The good thing is uh, we have a great background of already covering up with more than 10,000 plus financial profit, finance professionals across the globe. So more than 10,000 people have already been trained by our industry experts. Whenever we are talking about EduPristine, the experts which were going to come to deliver sessions would be from the field, that is, who are already working, who are preparing models in day in and day out, who are understanding models, structures, and they are part of investment banking or uh, in, from the securities houses and so on and so forth. So we have a pool of more than 1,000 professionals across the locations. You can see our investors being ASL partners, Dr. Mark Mobius, the king of the bond markets, as we call him. Rajesh Segal, again, 
both the investors from Franklin Templeton. Uh, we, we have trained students from 40 plus nationalities, that is in 40 plus countries we are present. Uh, we are given a specific training to inside ENY, Bank of America, JP Morgan. Uh, they have been our clients and so on and so forth. So we'll provide you not just in classroom but there will be a constant 24-7 support through online doubt solving, video tutorials as well as content. So you'll get a lot more than what you'll be getting uh, apart from in inside classroom trainings. These are the certifications which we are holding. Some of the institutions where we have provided the training, the financial modeling, the continuum solutions, the real estate modeling, infrastructure and project finance in INGBISA, Franklin Dundrina CFAs, uh, and so on and so forth. These are some of the colleges where we have provided the training. These are the countries where we are currently working in. Uh, complete North America, Europe. We are present in Latin America, Middle East, Asia in particular, Australia and New Zealand, and Hong Kong, Singapore, and so on and so forth. And of course in some countries of uh, Africa as well. That's South Africa. Was Botswana, Kenya, Mauritius. This is a, these are the classes that we cover, the topics as we call it. So it's a huge list starting from IPOs to corporate finance to risk management, mergers and acquisitions, operational risk, FRM, CFA and so on and so forth. Just an indicative list of topics covered in the courses, various courses that we are taking up. Thank you. Now, if you have any questions or if you already posted, we'll try and answer them one by one. Uh, hi, everyone. If you have any questions, you could just type them in the questions tab that you see in the control panel. Does anyone have any questions? Any specific questions about any particular course or what we are, I mean, what's, we are covered up utilities, we are covered up inputs and outputs of financial modeling and so on and so forth. Or if you have any further doubts, you can look at the post the questions to this particular email address as well. Use the contact details and so on and so forth. Just to summarize everyone, uh, I mean based on my experience uh, because I've been into the investment banking uh, since some time and uh, I worked into international finance and so on and so forth, it's, it's almost inevitable to have this knowledge. If you are not having then it's a big negative. Even if we end up joining in some of these premier companies and financial institutions because it would be difficult to survive or uh, as as and when we had to deliver the pitch books etc and uh, during our rounds of discussions with MDs uh, the knowledge of understanding of financial modeling was so important and crucial that you were given a specific time to end up and come up with a model for a particular company and that too giants in metals, minings, chemicals and other sectors. So if you are to finish a model for such a big company, let's say Fortune 500 company in 
four to five hours. It's it's a difficult task if we don't know how to form a model from the scratch. Thank you everyone for joining in. Hope you will take the advantage of these sessions. <laughs> thanks, Alicia. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you for participating. Stay tuned for more webinars from Edu Pristine. Thank you and good evening. Thank you.